Hi, it's Joe Clark, and welcome back to my Cisco Modeling Labs YouTube series. Last time, I went over some of the new features in CML 2.6. Um, that's what you're looking at right here. If you haven't already checked out 2.6, uh, I recommend, number one, you go and download it and install it. Or two, you look at uh, the video I did there that walks through some of those features. This time around, I'm going back and looking at a, a trick or tip, something that, that we get asked every so often. And in fact, I had to do myself the other day, which is increase the amount of memory in a running node uh, without having to wipe it. Um, same thing could be, could be applied to increasing the number of CPUs, virtual CPUs in a running node. Because typically, uh, if you have to make a resource change like that, the only way to do it is to first stop the node and wipe it which in the case of, say, NXOS or iOS XE, that's fine. You can first extract the configuration. Wiping is not such a big deal in that case. But in my case, um, and, and a question we do get asked quite a bit, is what about things like Ubuntu Linux? These are nodes where you can't extract the configuration, and you may have done some things on there like install custom packages, custom Python bits, whatever, um, and you don't really want to wipe it and have to do that all over again. Such was the case, in, uh, such was my case, because I have this uh, NSO, Cisco Network Service Orchestrator node here, um, and I was finding that NSO was running out of memory. The, the application NSO running on this Ubuntu node was running out of memory. Um, by default, Ubuntu only gets two gig of RAM. Uh, NSO kind of wanted a lot of that uh, for what I was doing. Uh, and so I needed to increase the amount of memory in this node. And I really didn't want to have to wipe it and reinstall NSO and do all that stuff all over again. Um, so I was able to increase this essentially double it to four gigs of RAM uh, without having to do any of that stop. Uh, well, I did have to stop it, but I didn't have to wipe it. Um, so I want to show you how to do that. And I'm going to do it this time with this test server, which is another Ubuntu node I've got running in my topology here. Um, so I'm going to show you right now, grow the console. This is the console window for the test server. I'll run top and you can see that the total memory is about two gigs. So this is the default Ubuntu node definition running about two gig of memory. The first thing I need to do um, when I'm going to want to do some resource surgery on one of these nodes is I first need to get its node ID, uh, not the name, but the ID. And to do that's very easy. I click on it. Uh, this pane comes up and see by default, it shows you the name test server. Just click on ID. You'll see the UUID there and you'll want to go ahead and copy that. So copy that to clipboard. We're going to need, use that later. The second thing I need to do is determine the compute node it's running on. Now, if this is a CML personal installation or a standalone enterprise or education, there's only the one node. There's the current server. In my case, however, I've got a clustered node here. Um, so I'll bring up that. You can see I've got a controller. It isn't allowed to run any VMs, and I've got two compute only nodes. Uh, those are allowed to run VMs. So I have to figure out which of these two compute nodes my test server is running on. The way I do that, the way I do that is I click on the nodes uh, pane up here, or the nodes tab, uh, and I'll get a list of all of the nodes that are currently running. Uh, in CML, I'll scroll up and I see the test server is currently running on uh, J. Clark CML Compute 1. So once I know that and I have the node ID, I'm good to go. I then need to go over to my cockpit for that particular compute. In this case, I'm in cockpit, I'm in the shell, I go, uh, dashboard. Once I log into cockpit, dashboard terminal, uh, I sudo, I need to be root. So I'm J. Clark on, on, on J. Clark CML Compute 1. That's where test server is running. And I run the vert sh command, the virtualization shell. This is from libvert. And then I run list. List will list all the current running domains or VMs on that. Um, and so if I paste in, see it's 264, 264 is running. Okay, so I've identified the correct uh, compute node for this particular VM, but it is currently running and I don't want to do any surgery on it while it is running. So I'm going to go back to CML. I'm going to go to my test server one, make sure I'm absolutely there and I'll click stop. So test server is now stopped. It's not wiped. So all of the state that I had on test server is still there. The disk is still existing, the backing disk. It's just stopped. 
We know that because if I go back over to cockpit and I run the list command again, you see that 2646 ending in 2FE now no longer in the domain list. But we still need to know that ID because the next thing we're going to do is do edit. We're going to edit that particular, we paste in the, the node ID, the UUID for that node. You might get prompted here, so I didn't get prompted because I, I pref I've already used the, the VIM editor, um, but you might get prompted here for an editor and you can choose between Nano or Vim Tiny, I think, or Vim Basic. Choose whatever you're comfortable with. I think it recommends Nano is the easiest. So if you're not comfortable with the VI commands, definitely go with Nano. It might feel more like a, a Windows text editor, um, but I'm gonna use VI. And there are two fields uh, that I need to change in here for memory. So I can do CPU as well. Um, I wouldn't recommend messing with some of these other parameters unless you absolutely know what you're doing. Uh, but you can increase the CPU. But in my case, um, I want to increase the amount of memory. Um, so by default, its uh, unit is kilobytes. So um, kilobytes of memory. And there are two fields, memory and current memory. We need to change them both. And they should be equal. Um, but I don't do too well with, uh, with kilobytes. So let's jump up to gigabytes. Just a little bit easier. You can, of course, do the math and multiply it out. Um, but we'll bump it up and put in four. So instead of two, which is what that number was, I'm going to go with four gigabytes of memory. I save that. Everything looks good. Edit it again, just make sure it's there. Look, it auto revert or auto made it kilobytes for me. Yay, I didn't have to do the math. I just said the number that I was more comfortable with and it did all that, but we validate it's there. Uh, note that it's still not running. All we did was we edited the offline domain XML for it. And now that it's good, we validated that the fields look good. We'll go back to CML and we'll click start. Uh, now test server is coming back up. We'll go back to its console and see it booting. Everything looking good. Didn't panic or anything on, on boot. That's always a good step uh, or a good, uh, a good sign that everything is going to perhaps work. But of course, we want to validate. So we're back up to the login prompt. That was quick. Log back in. Make sure my screen's big enough that top is going to render right. Give myself a decent terminal. And I run top, and now you can see that my total memory is much closer to four gigabytes. So we've gone from that two gigabyte default to four. We did it. We, yes, we had to stop the node, but we didn't have to wipe. Uh, we, can't, we kept all of the existing packages, all of the existing custom config that we might have done on there. Everything is the same. We've just increased the amount of resources. So I hope you enjoy. Uh, tune in next time for another CML update.